Hello and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse for the 35th edition of the Tip-Off Classic. We have game one here shortly between the Bath Wildcats and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. I'm Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. Happy to be here, happy to finally have basketball season underway. And the tradition, almost like none other in this area, the tip-off classic to get us started. Yeah, I think it's just an awesome time of year because, you know, you're transitioning from football season, you go right into basketball season. And what an awesome way for the Lima area to have this between these four schools that every year they, they match up during the regular season. But the reality is, is that this is just a great way for the community to come together and watch the beginning of a great basketball season. Ahead. Yeah, and there's so many stories around the four teams that are here tonight, unlike a lot of other years that we've come into. And we'll get into that. Let's start with tonight's uh, uh, excuse me, pregame. Tonight's pregame is brought to you by the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. Lima's the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. And we'll take a look at, in depth here at tonight's first game between Bath and LCC. Look, tonight's keys of the game first for the Bath Wildcats. Yeah, Nate, I think it's going to be an interesting thing for Bath. they got a new coach in Kirk Lozier. He takes over for Sean Powell, who, like we just mentioned a little bit ago, it's an interesting thing here uh, at the tip-off classic coaches changing teams but I think the biggest thing for Bath tonight is they're just going to have to play solid defense. I know they got a, a lot of newbies they've lost some players and they got a lot of guys that are out for the first time so uh, just fundamentally um, on defense and just being fundamental all the way around making sure that they don't commit turnovers making foul shots and just I think slowing the game down Nate. One of the things we're going to talk about with LCC they're very athletic and so for Bath to maybe maintain um, uh, how do I want to say it uh, keeping up in this game is they have to slow it down so that LCC doesn't get up and down the floor. Yeah, plenty of headlines on the other side of the floor as well with LCC. What are some of the keys that they have to hit tonight to come away with the victory? Yeah, they've got a lot of guys that, you know, we've heard these names before. Um, they've got a lot of veterans. I mean, they're going to have to depend on their veterans to see, you know, what they can do. You're going to see some athletic guys that you've seen on the football field on the basketball court last year, and some guys that can just get up and down the floor. I think they have a size advantage. I mean, if you look at Bath, height-wise, they, they, they match up okay, but I think athletic-wise, LCC has a real advantage, and so they can use their size advantage tonight, not only um, uh, vertically, but uh, also horizontally up and down the floor. And finally, just let their athletes play. I think that they've got some really good ones, Carson Parker being one of the ones that I really enjoy watching play, and just let their athletes get out in space and make plays tonight. The field house is filling up. We're going to have fans from top to bottom, one of the best venues in the entire state to watch basketball. We get to see two tonight. The first one's going to tip off here shortly. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters and the opening tip on WOSA. Hello and welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. As the announcement of tonight's starters are just underway, I'd like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. As the starters are being announced here, we'll take a look at tonight's starters as well. They're starting first with LCC. They're going to start at number one, Willie Foster. Number two, Carson Parker. Number four, Matthew Quantman. Number 12, Malachi Talbert. And number 14, Billy Burke. For the Bath Wildcats, they're going to start number two, Trey Crawford. Number three, Logan Markley. Number 12, Xavier Tickle. Number 13, Jackson Foster. And number 21, Brennan Ryan. Yeah, John, we talked about these two teams and... and the changes. Yeah. I mean, I mean that is going to be, I think, the theme throughout tonight's game is the changes that both of these teams are undergoing. The biggest one, of course, the most glaring that everyone is probably aware of, the head coaching change. Coach Powell now on the other side. He is the head coach of LCC taking over after what – Really, years of stability over there between Coach Sagerson and then sliding into, you know, his, you know, um, assist, longtime assistant coach and Coach Kill. Yeah. You know, Coach Powell's really the first person that's been on that LCC sideline that hasn't been entrenched in that program for a very long time. Right. And then on the other side, Kurt Lozier, a longtime coach in the area. He's been yep. with a lot of programs. A lot of people know him from the times he spent with Coach uh, Davis, Doug yep. Davis as well. So two, two coaches, been around the game, very familiar with it, but in new sets. I'll tell you what, you, you kind of summed it up there. I mean, look at Sean Powell. He played at Shawnee, coached at Bakken's and Bath. There's no more Lima than Sean Powell. I mean, he's got a, a history with this area, and it's going to be interesting coming into this Lima Central Catholic program where, like you said, 
over how many past years it's always been an LCC guy per se. Now he's bringing his stamp on the program. And you look at Kirk Lozier, like you said, he's coached for a long time at Delphus Jefferson and at Bath, helped out at a lot of programs, getting his opportunity to be a head coach. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this rolls out in just these next few moments as these two teams take it on. You know, the other interesting part, too, will be LCC. We know that they're athletic. They're going to want to run as they control the opening tip. They, they use that athleticism. They get out. They push the tempo. That's uh, Coach Powell's offense, as you see, a, try a quick one along the baseline right there. So it's going to go out of bounds. And it'll stay with LCC. But LCC, too, is coming off a long playoff run. They're, right. they're just getting a lot of these guys back into the gym over the last couple of weeks. It takes some time to get that conditioning from the football field to the court. And as you see, Carson Parker right there with the turnaround jumper, a little bit off. Nice rebound by LCC, going to be blocked out of bounds. Nice job by Xavier Tickle there to get his hands on that basketball. But it'll be interesting to see here in the early going, especially as this game moves forward, how that kind of maybe comes into play. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is is that you got a new coach in a program that's just getting going because there's not a lot of practice time. There's going to be a lot of rust here early on. So Billy Burke a little short on that one. Might have had a piece of that one blocked. Here comes Tickle quickly on the other side. Can't get that one to go. Bath comes up with the rebound. Tickle puts it right back up. That one's off. Billy Burke there for the rebound. I like the transition of Bath getting down the floor quickly and trying to get a shot up quick. Foster kicks it down into the corner. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. As you see, LCC is going to put some pressure, not let Bath bring this one up easily. That's a nice, nice rebound by Trey Crawford there, setting up the offense, and now you're starting to see this first set. You know, we've seen LCC not really get into a set, but now we see Bath getting into their first set, trying to make something on this second offensive possession. Three-point try is on. That one's going to be short. Burke chases down the rebound, able to control, but has it taken away as Tickle has been very active here in the early going, but stepped out on the baseline. The ball will go back to the Thunderbirds. The interesting thing is you see the replay here. Nice defense by Bath getting uh, not only one but two different uh, defensive stops there and getting the turnover on, uh, not on downs, I should say. That's a football term, but getting the possession turned in their favor. So LCC now going to bring it down, slows it down just a little bit. It's been pretty fast-paced action from both teams. Parker trying to go to the middle, get cut off. Lost it there for a second, but was able to gather it back in. Hands it off to Foster. Foster looking for some space, tries to create off the side of the backboard, but he's going to be fouled, and he will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, I like, I like Carson Parker, but the other the person that you're going to look for is, the, is both Fosters. You see DeMar Foster try to get in there and, and get uh, the opportunity to go to the free throw line. And, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, before the game of how this is going to play out with free throws, and this is the first free throw opportunity for LCC tonight. Foster not able to connect on the free throw, and, you know, seems like a good a time as any, maybe. We're talking about free throws to talk about some of the changes that we're going <laughs> to see. You know, and what, if you haven't been keeping up with it, as Foster's second free throw is good, and LCC is on the scoreboard first. Jamar with his first points. But they made some changes this year, John, when it comes to those free throws, and it's going to be interesting here as we move through the game. Well, I think it's just going to be hard for the average fan to not be in that, to not see that double or that bonus. You know, I'm so used to that seven fouls, but resetting every quarter, it's going to be interesting to see what happens you know, as this coach has strategized how to use this new rule. Three-pointer is good. That is the first 20th century lanes three-pointer of the game as Bath goes on top three to one. It's a nice shot by Logan Markley on the corner, set up in the corner and fired it up, and now Foster answers for LCC. So trading three-point shots right now. Back to a one-point difference, LCC on top, four to three. It's been a good, quick start like you mentioned, Nate. A lot of transition so far. And nice looking uh, jump shot there from Xavier Tickle. But, you know, both teams, you know, obviously wanting to get on the offensive side of the game first, getting out and getting some points early. Foster going to pull up. Shot is up. That one is good as Foster is feeling it right now. DeMar Foster has all the points for LCC. And some sharp shooting. You know, typically the rust is not only on uh, offense and defense and passing, but, you know, a lot of missed shots. And uh, you know, so far, we've had some sharp shooting here. Burke trying to reach through to poke that one away. He's going to get whistled for the foul. That'll be his first. So we're talking about the, the fouls resetting. It's actually the, so it's the team fouls at the end of every quarter. It doesn't matter if you have one or if you have 50. You go back to zero in the next <laughs> quarter. There's no more bonus. Anytime someone's going to go to the free throw line, they're going to shoot two. There's no more one and ones. There's none of that. It's all out of the game. Player fouls won't reset. They will still to accumulate. So there's still going to be that strategy. You can't just let somebody go in and, right. and just go crazy for a quarter. 
But it, especially as you go deep into games and there's no more trying to send guys to the, the free throw line or when you're trying to create extra possessions, you know, th these fouls could really come into play, especially in close games. And I think, you know, one of the battles that all the coaches are going to have is they just haven't, they haven't, we haven't been in these situations yet. And how, how our coach is going to learn from this? We've coached a certain way for such a long time, but how are we going to uh, uh, game plan this and to the situations that we face? Mark kicks this one down into the corner. Three point shot is up. And Parker Judy gets it to go down for another 20 Century Lanes three-pointer. Yeah, Parker Judy comes off the bench right away, sets up in the corner and drills a triple, They're giving LCC a four-point lead. Nice uh, shot in the arm by Parker Judy. 4.20 left to go here in the opening quarter. LCC on top, 9-5. See Bath trying to find the ball, get the offense set. LCC doing a nice job with the pressure. Tickle able to track that one down before the backcourt violation. Dribbles into some trouble, has to get rid of it. Crawford works against Foster at the top of the key. Foster pokes that one away. Crawford able to get it back in. Hand off for the three. No good off the side of the rim. Parker Judy goes up, gets the rebound. Foster feeds to the inside. Collins loses that one, tries to get it back up top, and that's going to go back to the Bath Wildcats. Turnover on LCC. And that's one of those things where you bring some guys in off the bench. You've seen Angelo Collins come in for LCC as well. And, you know, and like you mentioned earlier, the late start, I think that this is where it's really critical is when you start to get those subs in. They haven't had the scrimmages. They haven't had the practice time. New coach, new system. There will be some rough edges here as we get going. So Jackson Foster moves around, hands it off. So Markley be involved here in the offense in the early going. Still a four-point deficit. LCC on top. Bath moves it around the perimeter. Markley gets cut off, has to kick it back up top. Crawford goes to drive. And right now, LCC's defense causing all sorts of havoc. That's going to be a turnover, and it'll go back to the Thunderbirds. Yeah, you, I, like, I like what LCC's doing pressure-wise. They're playing man-to-man -man defense. They're getting in the lanes. Bath's trying to move the ball, uh, trying to get it across the court, but LCC doing a really good job of extending themselves and getting into those passing lanes. Here's Willie Foster, brought it up for LCC, hands it off to Collins. Passed off to Parker, Parker pull up, jump shot is good. Carson Parker looking like he's not missing a beat coming off a of football season. Well, pa Carson Parker is just a great athlete. I mean, he can do it all, quarterback of the football team, but no doubt he's been playing basketball and stayed in basketball shape as well. He's looking sharp early on. Welsh has to get rid of that one, ends up in the hands of Foster. Jackson moves it over down into the corner. It looks like Bath wants to try to get things going on the inside, but LCC doing a nice job of denying, and Coach Lozier wants to take a timeout and talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome. Welcome back. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So Bath wanted to take the Metzger Financial Services timeout, try to talk about it, set up the offense. Coming out of it, though, that defense from LCC is swarming. I like the timeout by Coach Lozier. Get guys composed, figure out what you're doing, but LCC got under control, too. But what a nice deep triple by Jackson Foster, giving Bath just a little bit of pump there. Jackson Foster with another 20th century three-pointer. As you see, Willie Foster trying to go to the inside, take some contact. He's going to go to the free throw line. Big shot by Jackson Foster on the other side to cut this back to a one possession game. As you've seen them be able to get a couple of good looks from the three-point line, but not a lot was falling here early. Willie Foster doing a nice job of pushing the tempo to get back down for the answer as you see him make his first free throw. Yeah, Willie Foster get a, got a lot of time last year as a freshman, uh, made a real big impact on this LCC team. You can see he's grown in this past year. He looks really well, looks like he's been prepared. Uh, it's going to be uh, really fun to watch him uh, progress this season. Willie Foster sends a second shot up and as goes one for two from the Web Insurance free throw line on that trip. LCC up four, 12 to eight, 210 left to go here in the opening quarter. That's just a nice steal by Foster, almost getting the steal, but uh, making sure Zach Welsh there for the, the Wildcats doing a good job of making sure they maintain possession. Here's Markley, drives baseline. He gets cut off, kicks it back out. Welsh, three-point try is no good, but rebounded by the Wildcats. Here's Markley's two-pointer, no good, off the back of the iron. 
Wildcats are doing a nice job giving themselves second and third opportunities. And now we have a whistle down low. And it looks like they're going to get Collins on this one. Angelo Collins is going to get whistled for his first foul. Yeah, I like what Brennan Ryan uh, for Bath has been doing underneath. He's been doing a great job of getting rebounds. He's a six foot seven senior. And so he's doing a really good job of uh, not only using his height, but his positioning as well. And uh, each team right now, Nate, only has used, has only had one turnover. So right now it's been a pretty clean game for this first quarter, first game of the season. So Bath will inbounds it from underneath their own basket. And as you see Xavier Tickle checking back into the game, this one's going to be poked away. Jordan Pretty chases it down, tries to finish at the rim, can't get it to go down. Rebound to Parker Judy, and he puts it back for two. Yeah, Jordan Pretty did a great job of getting up in vertical, just didn't get it to go on part, uh, to fall, and Parker Judy does a good job of following it and getting that offensive rebound and that tip, pushing this LCC lead to six. Off the made basket, LCC right back into that pressure. Bath able to get into the front court, but it wasn't easy. And then we're going to have a whistle on the other side here. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Lever Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Minute 21 here, left to go in the corner. Bath will inbounds beneath their own basket one more time. Welsh looks for somewhere to go with it. Tries to get into Tickle and is able to throw it a little bit deep, but he gets it. And right now, this defense, John, of LCC is just not letting Bath settle into anything. The passing lanes are clogged. They, you, they look like they want to go inside. They're trying to force it in down low to Ryan, but Burke's doing a great job and good positioning. Well, and that's something that Coach Powell preaches is this man-to-man -man smothering defense. And you're going, they want to get points off of the turnovers and hasn't been able to create a lot of turnovers so far, but really doing a good job in getting the guys off the bench. Right now, he's playing eight, nine guys just to get fresh bodies out there. So that was the second foul on Burke as he's going to have to come out. You see Angelo Collins will come in and replace him. So it'll be interesting with Burke coming out of the game. We saw them trying to feed Ryan down low, and we'll see if I would imagine Bath will try to take advantage and, and see if they can't get something going inside. Well, Billy Burke, just outstanding athlete as well, just like you know we mentioned Carson Parker, critical on the football team as well. Lamar Foster gathers that one in but leaves that one short. Ryan comes down with the rebound. Mar Foster, he's all over the place, doing a really good job. Hasn't been able to convert um, some of, a couple of those shots, but he is leading score right now with six points. Dickel's three-pointer, no good off the side of the rim. Pretty was able to gather that one in. A little bit of trouble there for a second. Needed somewhere to go with the basketball. LCC is able to recover. 27 seconds left to go here in the quarter, and we'll see if Coach Powell wants to take the last shot. Looks like Foster's going to pull it out and kind of do a little stall ball here just to get that, that last look. They've gotten off to a really good start. They've got a, a six-point lead here, but now they want to get one final look before we move into the second quarter. See if we get the drive and the kick out. There's a lot of spacing down there. Foster keeps it himself. Willie not able to get that one to go down. Going to have a whistle with .9 seconds left to go. And that foul... See who that went on. I think they're going to get Carson Parker for a push underneath when he's trying to get the offensive rebound. Uh, he's battling underneath, and it looked like his hand got extended there just a little bit too much. And when he came down with the rebound, it looks like they got him for a, a push off on the rebound. So Parker picks up his first foul of the game. So with .9 seconds left to go, and not a lot of time, but if Bath gets a good inbounds here. They could give themselves an opportunity to get a shot off. See what kind of defense LCC wants to put on as well. These are always dangerous situations, Nate, because there's, you know, under a second to go, but you don't want to, you don't, if you're LCC, you don't want to get a cheap foul here. You don't want to do something that would, number one, get another player a foul, or number two, put them at the free throw line. So, you know, it's kind of a difficult situation for a coach to design a play here, especially when it's a full court uh, uh, situation. There was a lot of white jerseys on the floor there <laughs> for a minute. Some confusion is you think, can't, you can't play that many. Is. And I'm not 100% <laughs> sure still what we're going for here, but I think, with that being the fifth foul maybe on LCC here see, in the quarter. We're, order, we're, rusty, we're right? already getting into the foul yeah. issues. You can see the coach is already confused. Yep. And it looks like Bath, with, and there's no more one and one, so Bath's right. going to go down here and shoot two. And see, there you go. There, there's that situation where five fouls to get that fifth foul in the first quarter in a normal situation where, you know, we're just playing it out of bounds. But now you're going to get two free throws here um, on that fifth foul. And then, like you said, Nate, it'll reset in the second quarter, so we'll start all over again. But I kind of thought maybe we'd get to the end of the first quarter with no free throws because <laughs> of fouling situations. So, 
And they're still talking about it at the scorer's table, trying to get this worked out, making sure that they have the situation correct. But you got Xavier Tickle over there standing at the Web Insurance Agency free throw line, waiting to get things going. And looks like we're ready, and he's going to shoot two. I'm glad that we're not the only ones confused. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> it's it going to take a minute for us to figure all this out. <laughs> so now it's not going to be Xavier Tickle. He's going to step away. And it looks like Zach Welsh is going to have to come in. And So I think this was a confusion for everybody. The new fouls, it was five. <laughs> Coach Lozier wanted to get a whole new set on here for this last shot, but now they got to shoot the free throws. And Coach Powell's looking for a little bit of uh, clar uh, clarity here as well. But now we're all set. We got Zach Welsh at the Web Insurance Agency free throw line. He'll be shooting two. As Bath finds himself trailing 14 to eight. Welsh able to get the first one to go down. So we talked about it, and that's why, I mean, you had to talk about it early because you never knew when it was going to come into play. And right away here, first quarter of game one, it's already coming. In. And I think everybody basically was like, is this right? Is this, you know, they kind of all looked at each other like, is it time? And it, and it was. Welsh not able to connect on the second one. Shot is on its way, and that's going to be off the mark, and that'll bring the first quarter to a close. After one here at the tip-off at the Fieldhouse, LCC on top, 14 to 9. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Fieldhouse. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. And it was a fast-paced, back-and-forth battle there, especially in the early going. Settled down a little bit. We saw uh, DeMar Foster get really hot for the Thunderbirds, yeah. and his six points in the quarter really were the difference. Yeah, absolutely. He got going early, and a lot of it was because he was so active on the defensive end, uh, creating space. And, you know, he missed a couple bunnies, uh, Nate. If, if he doesn't, he probably has 10 points, and LCC – has an 18-9 to nine lead, but, you know, that's just one of those things that they're working through right, right now, trying to get their, their feet underneath them. I like the pressure that LCC's bringing, but honestly, Nate, I'm really impressed with Bath, what they brought this first quarter. You know, we didn't know what we were going to expect. I've seen some really good hustle and a well-coached team so far out of the Bath Wildcats, so this is making out to be a pretty fun game. Yeah, and, you know, we talked a lot about LCC and the changes, and we talked spend a lot of time talking about the coaching. Not so much who's on the floor for Bath, there's a lot of changes in this starting lineup and on this roster as a whole for Bath. They have a lot of minutes from last year who are not here now. And so you got kids who are stepping up and, and filling these roles. And so far, so good, at least if you're Coach Lozier and the Wildcats. Yeah, I think you have not only guys that have served their time playing JV and maybe, you know, coming off the bench, but guys that haven't played basketball in a few years coming back out uh, to give uh, the Bath Wildcats minutes. So Angelo Collins able to get a piece of that one as Brennan Ryan tried to go up with the shot. Basketball will stay with the Wildcats. Crawford looks to trigger the inbounds, trying to find somebody, ends up in the hands of Markley. Markley going to travel around with that left hand, takes a lot of contact on the inside. And another foul on LCC is this one will be Carson Parker, and that's going to be his second. Well, and I think that's one of the one of the uh, telltale signs of playing aggressive defense is that you are going to foul. And we've seen early in the, the first quarter, LCC had those those five team fouls, which uh, caused Bath to get to the free throw line right at the end of the first quarter. But uh, that's just indicative of a team that's going to play aggressive, but you got to be deep, especially if you're going to get guys in foul trouble. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, Billy Burke with two fouls and uh, now having another player in, in a two foul situation, Carson Parker. You know, they got to kind of take a look at that and make sure that those guys are going to be able to play valuable minutes here in the rest of this game. So Markley tried to go right after Carson Parker that time. Did LCC able to come away with it, though. As Drew Pester had come into the game, got a hand on it. Oh, and Willie Foster almost able to come away with that one. A nice, almost looked like a set play between Carson Parker and Willie Foster. As Foster was running that baseline, can't get it to go. But after the rebound, LCC is going to take a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, actually, Jackson Foster kind of messed up that play. He did a good job of defending that and kind of making sure that, uh, that Willie Foster didn't get a clean shot at the rim. And then we had a really nice opportunity there by Angelo Collins to get to the free throw line and, and, and really get that nice rebound and get himself to the free throw line. So Angelo Collins steps up to the Web Insurance Agency free throw line, knocks down the first. He'll have a second shot. Second shot on its way and good. So a perfect trip for Angelo Collins that time as LCC extends their lead to 16-9. 
And LCC's doing a nice job of both teams, really, offensive rebounding, getting those second chance opportunities. And that, the pressure defense is going to show where they're going to get this 10-second call here. We talked about that defense from LCC for most of that first quarter. They did a nice job of causing issues, as you see on the four-season team instant replay. As Once again, that pressure causing some issues. Crawford not able to get it over the midcourt line in time. So LCC forces a turnover. And you mentioned that first quarter, it was pretty pretty clean, not a lot of turnovers. But that's something LCC is looking to change, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even on that press there, it really wasn't a full press at all. I mean, they were just kind of backed up and just kind of hanging back, waiting to run and jump. And, and Bath just did not do a good job of communicating and getting across the, uh, uh, the, 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 the half court line. Bath has now turned the ball over four out of the last six possessions, which, you know, as we talked earlier, they had only had one turnover in the whole game. And that's four in the last six possessions. There's Collins going to work down low, kicks it out. Parker Judy for three. And he connects on a 20th Century Lanes three-pointer. Yeah, Parker Judy's done a really good job. He's had two triples now from the corner, um, both times coming off the bench and really giving, doing a nice job of uh, putting LCC in control of this game. Nice job by Bath to break that press that time as Ryan looked like he uh, took a walk, and he did as Collins got off his feet. I think Ryan was trying to see if he couldn't get that contact, as you see there, and just moved his feet way too much. Yeah, he did a really nice job of ball faking. The problem is, is that when you ball fake, you can't move your feet. And, and Brent Ryan was, uh, you know, all over the place. Angelo Collins came flying, so he did a really good job of, of, of getting him off his feet as well. But uh, he's got to make sure he get, maintains possession there and doesn't get that, that, uh, that foul. LCC with the double-digit lead on top, 19-9 to here in the second quarter. Willie Foster moves around. Looking for the offense to get set. Tries to take the screen, get some space created, but can't connect on the shot. Rebound down to Tickle. He's going to push the tempo. One of the few times Bath has been able to bring it up without a lot of pressure, but Willie Foster takes it away. He's going to look for the jump dunk, and he can't get that one to go as he gets stuffed on the front part of the rim. I like the aggressiveness by Willie Foster, though, and getting the steals and getting the turnovers as well. And coming down that time, you saw Pretty. Looking over, he was trying to see if Foster was going to catch up to him. But before he was able to make that pass, the whistle's going to be called. Xavier Tickle's going to pick up the first foul of the night for him. And ball is going to be out, taken out of bounds by LCC. These first five possessions for Bath have been turnovers, Nate. And that's not the way Coach Lozier would have wanted to start the second quarter. With such a clean first quarter, coming out in the second quarter and creating and having these first five uh, possessions as turnovers, not the way you want to get started. Here's Parker Judy. He moved away from that corner, went to the top, and couldn't connect there. Rebound down to Bath. And he talked about the turnovers on the last couple of possessions. You got to think at some point here, they got to get themselves back righted and looking for a clean trip. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. DeMar Foster with the rebound. Pushes up ahead to Judy. Judy all the way in off the glass for two. I love the transition. and You've seen LCC immediately grab that rebound. You've seen DeMar Foster quickly get out of there to Parker Judy, and Judy made, did a really nice job of getting up and getting that score. Going to have a 30-second timeout here by LCC. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. So you see Coach Powell wants to take the Metzger Financial Services timeout here. Yes, his team has the big lead, but they've been doing it with pressure and turnovers here in the second quarter. Yeah, and, you know, they've done a, a really good job of playing defense. You can see immediately this is going to be their, their, their style of basketball, pressure, 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 create turnovers, and they've been able to do that and get to the rim. I love the quickness uh, of not only getting the turnovers, but to, trying to get to the rim quickly, and then also just creating open shots as well that you don't have to get in a set, run a set, but getting points off transition. Yeah, I think this is one of the things, too, that as we see Bath, you know, we talked about early going, they got some new faces on the, uh, on the floor. They've got to get somebody who feels comfortable with that basketball in their hands, especially bringing it up with the pressure that LCC is showing. Right now, it just kind of seems like it's a sprint. They're, they're putting themselves in bad spots on the floor, and that's leading to a lot of these turnovers as they are forcing them into these passing lanes. And right now, LCC just doing a better job of causing disruption. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that they, you know, like you said, you can't mimic that in practice. You can't mimic this kind of pressure. You know, young, you're going against JV guys a lot of times, and so this is really the first time, besides a few scrimmages, that they've faced this kind of pressure. And how do you handle it? How do you respond? And there's another turnover as the trap came from Pretty. Pretty now going to take the three-pointer from the corner and gets it to go. 
Yeah, Jordan Pretty coming in as well, giving a nice spark. Him and, and Parker Judy both have come off the bench and really uh, gave, given LCC uh, an oomph off the bench. And now you can see this lead really kicking forward here. Right now, LCC just seems a step quicker every time they get down the floor. Another turnover. DeMar Foster has it, drops it off to Pretty. He's going to drive, loses the handles. It's going to go out of bounds and back to the Wildcats. Yeah, and if you're Bath, you know, just like you said, Nate, they're just trying to discover who can get the ball, who can be the ball handler, who can be the guy that can get them up and get them in their set. This defense has been so smothering, and you can see now they're even putting it on here a little bit more. They're going to pressure all the way down the floor. Bath's trying to find somebody who can get this offense going. And what we're seeing, too, you know, Bath, it almost is they get over and then they're not sure what to do or where to go with it, and as soon as they hesitate and take that second, LCC is right there. And that is a nice jumper that time by Tickle as he had some pressure, but he was able to get that up quickly. And finally, the scoring drought is over for Bath. And that's what they need. They need to get down there. They need to try to just get an open look. And uh, nice look and play there by Billy Burke, who came off the bench. And, you know, quickly, once he gets back off the bench from those two fouls, they quickly get him involved in the offense, which I think is a good idea, for, especially for his confidence coming back to the, to the hoop here. So Tickle's going to have to go off the floor as he has some blood coming from his lip, it looks like. He's going to have to get cleaned up. You know, we talked about the the uh, LCC's been impressive in the pressure and everything they've been able to do here. But, we, you know, we didn't talk. They did that with Billy Burke on the bench. That's right. That's they were right. able to extend this lead to cause this kind of disruption, to deny things going on from the entry with Burke on the sideline. Angelo Collins came into the game, did a great job filling in, and now Burke back in here with four minutes left to go in the half. Well, and, and I think that's that's – key for LCC. We knew that the, the first five were going to be pretty good, but what was number six, seven, eight, nine, maybe, ten maybe going to look like? And so far they've been extremely impressive. Three-pointer on its way. Crawford can't connect. Carson Parker goes up. He gets the rebound. Brings it up the floor. Going to go into the lane. Drops it down into the corner. Pretty for three, and it's good. What I like about LCC, Nate, is that like I said earlier, they're moving quickly, and they're, but they're getting open shots. They've only had two turnovers the entire night, so they're not sitting and getting in sets and running different, you know, different uh, sets throughout the game. They're getting down the floor and getting an open look quickly. Carson Parker able to park, poke that one away from behind, but Bath able to maintain possession. See Joe Mosley now trying to work through a screen. Can't find a lot of space. LCC doing a great job of collapsing. Pulls up for two. This one's going to be no good. Offensive rebound comes to Bath, but they can't get the put back. And those are critical right now, Nate. Anything that you do, which is a great offensive rebound by Zach Welsh, he missed the, the follow-up. And they got to. not only do they got to get those offensive rebounds, those second opportunities, but you have to take advantage of those second opportunities as well. DeMar Foster with the big Euro step trying to get around to get some space. He's going to get fouled, go to the free throw line. That one's going to go on Eli Jesko. It's his first. So they're going to say that one was on the floor prior to the shot, so LCC will take this one out of bounds. See Angelo Collins coming back into the game for the Thunderbirds. He gets the inbounds, drops it off to Burke. Burke hands it off to Pretty. He puts the shot up good for two. He now has eight in the quarter. Yeah, Jordan Pretty is just like I mentioned earlier. He's come off the bench, giving him a spark, but his sharp shooting has really extended this lead. You can see LCC up by 20 now. Uh, and just really pushing and making Bath, having to, to force them into making some really bad decisions. Another turnover as this is the second 10-second ten, ten violation on the Wildcats as LCC is just doing a great job of mirroring them as they come up the floor. We've seen them send the trap several different times. They are doing a great job of not letting Bath have any sort of rhythm. They don't get any sort of space. And, they just don't have an answer right now. And you can see the frustration setting in. I mean, the guys are kind of looking at each other, looking at over, over at Coach Lowe's. They're trying to figure out what can we do to break this pressure. I'm not sure there's a real answer right now. So an illegal screen that time as Billy Burke is going to get whistled for the foul. And that's big. Is that He's only been in for about a minute and a half, two minutes of gameplay now, and he's picked up his third foul here of the game. Well, that'll be something that uh, – that, uh, Coach Powell will have a conversation with him after tonight about three quick fouls. Obviously, they don't want him in that situation, but um, it's something that is a learning is a learning experience. I mean, everything is a teachable moment right now. New coaches, new systems, but also just how to uh, uh, get out there and to, to to use your defensive aggressiveness in spots that uh, that may not uh, result in three fouls early. Jesco drops it over to Mosley. Mosley working against Foster has it taken away. Willie not able to gather that one in as two Bath players actually ended up fighting for it. 
And it looks Will like that's going to go back to LCC, and it is. Willie Foster is relentless. I mean, he is all over the place defensively. And, you know, I, I, I like what he's doing. You know, not only is he moving his feet, but he's, he's active with his hands as well. He's, he's moving all over the place to the point where, you know, these bath guards are struggling just to make an entry pass. Matthew Quatman back into the game for LCC. Here's DeMar Foster with the basketball. Drops it over to Collins. Collins looking for a little bit of space. Ends up in the hands of Willie Foster. Nice ball moving by LCC. Three-pointer on its way. No good. Ends up into the hands of Markley. Markley going to move quickly. Have a lot of contact underneath. And that is going to be a blocking foul. And that one is going to go against Willie Foster. That will be his second. Yeah, I like what Logan Markley did. He got the rebound and got it out there quick to Jackson Foster. And Foster did a really good job of getting underneath the uh, the hoop there, and they're going to give that one foul to Willie Foster now, his second foul. But I like the what, what Bath did there. Again, transition kind of taking a page out of LCC's playbook. So a couple of key players here on this Thunderbird team with multiple fouls here in the half. See if they continue to play aggressive. They do on that one right there. Willie Foster comes up with it, but he has it taken away from behind. Ends up out of bounds, and he'll stay with LCC. It looks like uh, Foster tried to set up there and maybe run some kind of offense. And instead of staying in transition, Bath did a really good job of coming up behind and, and trying to create that turnover. Didn't get it, but tried to create it. Inbounds comes into Collins. He drops it off to Quatman. Quatman with the drive, pulls up for two. That one's off the front of the rim. Going to be brought down. That one's going to be Welsh. He gets another rebound here for the half. Minute 23 left to go. Yeah, Matt Quatman's a name that you'll hear a lot during this basketball season. He brings a lot to this team defensively and offensively. He hasn't been in the, on the scoreboard yet, but I think you'll hear his name as the game goes on. Drew Pester comes down with the rebound for LCC, gets it ahead to DeMar. DeMar works through the lane, off the glass, no good. Fights for the rebound. Collins on the putback. That one's no good. And this is where it's early. Lots of bunnies missed, lots of <laughs> layups missed, and this is just time that has not been spent on the basketball court. It's indicative of what you're seeing out, out here right now. So Crawford gets it down to Markley. Markley turns around, has to hand it back to Crawford as LCC continues to do a nice job defensively, whether it's putting the pressure on or in the offensive sets. A lot of pressure by Quatman. And we're going to have a foul down low, and this one's going to get whistled against Pester. And you can see that Quatman did a really nice job of, of making sure that, uh, that uh, Zach Welsh did not get around him, but uh, they're going to get that foul. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not <laughs> <On> sure. <Pester. laughs> uh, kind of looked like. the replay, you don't, I don't know about that, Nate. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a tough one down low. It looked like Pester was the one being hooked, but <laughs> either way, Bath with it here. 30 seconds left to go in the half. We'll see if they want to hold for the last shot or if they just try to run their offense and see what they can get. Markley kicks it over to Foster. Foster has that one blocked. Collins up ahead to Willie Foster. Willie thought about the three-pointer, decides to put it on the floor. He's going to get whistled for the double dribble. Yeah, it looks like he maybe didn't think that he had a, had maintained his, his possession there, but uh, official Scott Nurse said that he did so that when he went ahead and took that next dribble, he called him for a double dribble. Interesting thing here, Nate. We've we seen that we got into the, I guess, I don't know, do we call it the bonus, or what do we call it now? What's the, what's the, I, I'm not, I, don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> we, don't know what, we don't know what it's called. But it, it, we haven't reached that five foul limit here in the second quarter, so we're not, I guess, double bonus, because there is no bonus anymore, but free throws, okay, free throws. But uh, we haven't reached that this, this quarter. Pressure from LCC, trying to cause a little disruption. Bath able to get a look at it, sends the long shot. Had a lot of time still left on the clock. A little surprised on that one. That one's going to go out of bounds with .5 seconds left to go. And not sure why. I believe that was Crawford that sent that one up. And not sure if maybe he just got a quick look at the clock and lost track of where he was. But LCC now is going to have an opportunity for a catch and shoot. Yeah, I just, you know, I think it was uh, maybe thought there was one shot left and, and got the ball and quickly tried to do something with it and realized there's probably more time on the clock than what he had previously thought. LCC up right now, 31 to 11, 0.5 left to go. They're just going to hold the ball, let the clock wind down, and they're going to go to the locker room with the big lead. After one half of play, LCC in control. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replays are brought to you by Four Season Tees, offering over 750 high-definition championship pro courses. 
Brooke, book your tee time today at 567-712-2040. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. And, John, we weren't 100% sure what we were going to get coming into this game. It's the first game. We know there was changes on both sides. But LCC came out on fire, did an absolutely phenomenal job on defense, and then turning that defense into offense. Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest thing right now is that I'm seeing is Bass committed 12 turnovers to LCC's four right now. And it's what you just said, those that defensive pressure that's created that transition offense that's allowed them to pu push to this 20-point lead. We kind of thought that might happen early, but Bath maintained they were doing a good job of getting the ball past half court, but even in that second quarter was a critical quarter where that smothering defense really uh, pushed this LCC lead a lot bigger than what Bath had expected. It was only 14-9 after the opening quarter. Bath had done a nice job of coming out and hitting a couple of big shots from three. Kept this one close, but it was all LCC in the second as they outscored Bath 17-2. And that opened up this lead of 31 to 11. So Bath, they've they've caused some work for themselves. They got a hole they got to dig themselves out of. But we've seen them be able to hit those big shots. We know that Brendan Ryan down low can do some damage. And LCC, the one thing that they didn't do well was staying out of foul trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Billy Burke with three, Carson yep. Parker, Willie Foster, both with two. So if Bath can find some way utilizing this, they can get themselves back into it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that, that strategy, too, is to go at those guys, and, you know, go after them early and try to get them in foul trouble. We've seen some really good productivity off the bench from LCC, but if you're Bath right now, one of the key stats, they have seven steals, LCC does, to Bath zero. So Bath's really not even able to get on the defensive end and play defense because of LCC's quick transition. Both teams missed their first attempt here in the second half. LCC with the basketball, moves it around the perimeter. Willie Foster for three. That one's no good. Trey Crawford with the rebound. And I think this will be interesting, too, because as we go into the second half, how do the coaches adjust? We know that LCC is going to continue to do what they were doing, but how did Bath adjust? And you see right away, nice play by Logan Markley to go to the hole. Markley did a great job of running the baseline, and he was rewarded for his efforts. And no, they're going to call an offensive foul wow. as Markley's basket will be no good and it will go back to LCC. Logan Markley picks up his first foul of the game. And LCC's lucky because that was Billy Burke right underneath the hoop. That could have been uh, his uh, third foul and that would have really put LCC in a bind. Uh, excuse me, it could have been his fourth foul early in this game, but Burke did a nice job of setting his feet and that's a tough break for the Wildcats. So DeMar Foster will bring it up for the Thunderbirds in the beginning parts of the second half. Carson Parker hands it off to Pretty. Pretty had a nice second quarter. He had eight, and he's going to pick up right where he left off. Gets that one to go for two. Yeah, uh, coming off the bench, uh, Pretty has just done a really good job of coming in and being that instant spark. Jordan Pretty doing a heck of a job for the T-Birds right now. And I'll tell you what, if you told Coach Powell before this game that his two leading scores in the, coming into the second half were going to be Jordan Pretty and it was uh, Parker Judy, yeah. uh, he'd have taken that all night long. Well, it's just nice to know that he can immediately go to those two guys off the bench and get a spark. Mar Foster is able to split the defense, gets that one to fall down. He had a big first quarter, but Bath did a nice job of kind of shutting him down there in the second. And he gets going here early in the third. Well, DeMar Foster's been everywhere tonight. He's playing aggressive defense, getting in those lanes, almost getting that steal right there as well. Crawford able to readjust, can't get that one to go down, fight for the rebound. Carson Parker comes away with it. Parker drops it off to Willie Foster. He sends a three-point try. That's no good. Burke fights for the rebound, gets it. But Jackson Foster comes up with it for Bath. Yeah, I like the hustle by Billy Burke underneath the hoop. Going for it, but Jackson Foster just gave a little bit more and ended up with the rebound. Now Bath. It's been a long scoring drought. Only two points since the first quarter. And we're going to have a foul. Jordan Pretty's going to pick that one up. It'll be his first. Yeah, and I think this is a, a, the point of the game. If you're LCC with a big lead like this, Nate, you want to keep getting better. I mean, you know you, you got to continue to improve, and I think that one of the things, that, one of the dangers is is jumping out to a big lead and then kind of going on cruise control the rest of the game. So I know if you're Coach Powell, you still want to see the effort. You still want to see the, the high level of enthusiasm and, and effort on both ends of the, of the court. 
You see Coach Powell not afraid to go to his bench, already bringing in substitutions. Drew Pester coming in, Angelo Collins checking into the game, as does Parker Judy. I think the biggest thing that the Thunderbirds so far can take away from this game is they haven't had a drop off when they've had to do substitutions. It, it, the offense has run smoothly, the defenses look great, and they just continue chugging. And when you can do that with two, three, four deep on your bench, that is a huge benefit. Yeah, I mean, they're not losing anything. In fact, they're getting more of a little bit of a spark. I mean, even their starting five hasn't scored, like you mentioned, uh, as much as the bench has. And there is another 20th century lanes three-pointer by Parker Judy. He now has a game-high 13. I'm going to tell you something. If you didn't know Parker Judy's name, he will be scouted for tomorrow night's game because he's hit three triples now uh, in this game to give him 13 points. I mean, actually, I think he's hit four triples. And so he's really done a great job of getting – now off the bench and giving a big spark for the uh, for the T-Birds. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. 4.51 left to go here in the third. LCC in control, 38 to 11. Jackson Foster trying to set the offense. You see an LCC force bath to have to do most of their damage from the perimeter all night. Finally get a good look inside by Welsh, but he can't get it to go. Nice job by Carson Parker. You know, Carson Parker does a lot of things out on the floor. Typically, he's one of the leading scorers. He's going to try a triple here. But he just does so many other things on the court. And I love his game. You know, this is probably maybe not the start he wanted early in the season, but he's probably getting those basketball legs underneath him as well. Yeah, those guys have only been in the gym consistently, at least for probably about two weeks now. Uh, trying to get themselves ready to go here for tonight's game. And I'll tell you what, though, you know, you got to love the fire, the competitiveness of LCC. You saw Parker that last time on that shot, even with his team up big, frustrated with himself, not able to get that one to go. And now he's going to pick up a foul. We'll see if they give it to him or Pester. They were both right there. Yeah, and that's, that's you know, that aggressiveness. I think that you can be aggressive but be smart as well. And I think that, you know, uh, I think Parker's a little bit confused as to why he was called for a foul there, but that's going to give Jackson Foster the opportunity to get to the free throw line. And uh, not a lot of free throws for Bath early in this game. They only shot two in the first half, so uh, this will uh, this will take that on by one here. So Jackson Foster goes to the web. Insurance agency free throw line can't connect on the first. He'll still have two more. Parker did get charged for that foul, and that is his third of the game. So him and Billy Burke both with three fouls as Jackson Foster connects on the second. Well, and I think if you're, you know, if you're Coach Powell, the good news is, is that it, it may not matter if they're at three fouls. But I think these are, once again, like I mentioned earlier, teachable moments of, of you know, how to play aggressive but be smart by, while playing aggressive. And so even though Parker and Burke both have fouls here, you have a big enough lead where um, you can continue to leave them out on the court without any fear. You know, and it's also a little bit of a learning experience too. They, those guys are, you know, seniors. They're leaders on this team. You know, if you're Coach Powell, you're like, listen, you got to go out there. There may be games where you pick up early fouls. You need to go out there and learn how to play with these fouls and not right. pick up anymore. We need you. As you see, Carson Parker still out on the floor, even though some substitutions did come in. Matthew Quatman back into the game. Malachi Talbert into the game as Willie Foster knocks down another two. I like what you said there, Nate. You know, you just have to learn to play with – different situations I mean there's going to be nights where you may not be have any fouls and, and and you've been aggressive and there might be nights where you've not been aggressive and you have fouls so you know every game brings a different uh, aspect to it and so learning in those moments and, and becoming uh, experienced is, is it's just a part of the process. Jackson Foster getting aggressive here in the third quarter gets to the rim again gets that one to go down. Here's Collins works against Ryan. Deep underneath the basket, got the shot up, but couldn't get it to go. Quantman able to track down the rebound. Willie well, Foster's going to try to drive. Has to drop this one off to Talbert. Talbert can't get that one to go. And Bath comes up with it. Here's Foster one more time. Parker did a great job of reading that one. Cut that one off to get the steal. Parker, Parker going to go all the way in off the glass. 
Carson Parker for two. <laughs> Carson Parker thought about it for a moment. I uh, thought he might jam one down there, but I really like the move on the baseline to just take it up, get two points, get himself on the scoreboard. He's got four points now, but you can see he's bringing a lot of energy and a lot of positivity, a lot of leadership. One of the things we talked about before the game was rely on the veterans, and I feel like Carson Parker's been playing now for about eight years out there. Yeah, I think if uh, he has that same situation here early January, there might be a different finish right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> 2.38 left to go here in the quarter. LCC on top and with the basketball. Willie Foster going to move around, splits the defense off the glass and an easy lay-in for two. Yeah, Willie Foster just using his speed and athleticism. And if you're Bath right now, Nate, you've got to hunker down and you've got to be disciplined. You know you're down big. You're starting to, to feel the, the effects of uh, the, this, this massive lead, but you still got to maintain focus and stay fundamental here. You see Coach Lozier, too, letting his team play through this adversity, You're not calling a lot of timeouts, not getting on them. You're not even seeing a, a lot of animation from the bench. You know, we talked about having to learn to play through some things on the LCC side with Carson Parker and, and those fouls, but the same's true for Bath. You've got to be able to learn to fight through some adversity. Things aren't going to go your way. Can you regroup as a team on the floor in the moment? And it kind of seems that's what Coach Lozier's going for right here. Well, and I think this is a good strategy, and you've seen Logan Markley do just that. I mean, he's staying aggressive. He's going to the hoop. Now he's going to get an opportunity for a three-point play, but you're exactly right. I mean, the quickest, the easiest thing to do would be call timeouts and to try to talk about what's going on. But that's what that's what tonight's for. That's what tomorrow morning's for is to figure out what happened. But let these guys play through it. Let them get this experience. And, you know, Nate, already we're looking here. It's a big crowd. It's a really good opportunity for them to play in front of a big crowd and get this big game experience. So Logan Markley steps up to the Web Insurance Agency free throw line, looking for his first shot, gets that one to go. 44-18, LCC on top here. Two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Damar Foster moves around, hands it off to Collins. He works with the left hand. Nice spin move into the lane, and the floater goes. Hey, I've been impressed with Angelo Collins. He's come in off the bench just like uh, several others, but come in, giving him a spark inside, playing great defensively, but I like his athleticism there on the offensive side. Well, I think one of the things, too, coming out of Angelo, and if you're Coach Powell, you have to like to see is, you know, he's got that intensity. He's yeah. got that energy. Yeah. We've seen him get fired up, especially early in that first half when they started to open up that lead. And when you can have that energy coming off of the bench, you know, I mean, I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of people weren't real sure what they were going to get out of LCC this year. They knew the changes. You know, it, it hasn't quite been the level of the success uh, the last couple of years that I think, you know, Coach Kill when he was there and just LCC in general had been used to seeing. They knew they had the talent, but was they, were they going to be able to continue to move through it? And at least here in this first game, in this opening three quarters, I'll tell you what, this, this team looks like they're built for something special this year. You know, and one of the things I was, I was going to see was would they come out confused? Would they come out a little passive just because of all the changes? Nate, they've come out enthusiastic. I mean, they've come out. You can see their bench. There's Angelo Collins once again making a big play. Their bench is up. Their coaches are up. I mean, their ball boys are up getting after it right now. So the reality is is that I love their attitude and their enthusiasm that they're bringing to this game. Only four turnovers tonight by LCC, an incredible clean game uh, by them so far. And now for the first time tonight, we're seeing Collins and Burke out on the floor at the same time. Collins back-to-back -back buckets. Can't get that one to go, but... Yeah, nice length, size, athleticism. LCC is able to throw out there. Coach Powell putting different combinations, seeing what works. As we see Collins pick up a foul, that'll be his second. So we're seeing a little bit of everything here out of LCC in this first game. As Bath, too, trying to work through some things, some substitutions coming into the game. Eli Jusko checking in for the Wildcats. Yeah, it's promising if you're a Thunderbird right now. And I, I know it's, you know, three quarters into the, the basketball season. But I, to me, the the very the real promising thing is, is how deep they've gone on this bench. I mean, they, they've been able to go down the bench, put guys in. And they, not just guys come in, they've come in and contributed. I mean, they've done a really nice job of doing that and, and really uh, forcing this LCC team to look sharp early in the season. So Angelo Collins picking up another foul as Logan Markley takes a trip to the Web Insurance Agency free throw line. Able to connect on the first one. I think if you're Bath right now, you're looking for some things, but there's been some positivity. I, I like Logan Markley. I like what effort he's brought. I like the, how he's been able to get to the, the free throw line. Jackson Foster's another one. We've seen him active tonight making plays. Trey Crawford, too, hustling, getting after it. 
like we said, if you're Bath right now, there's no reason to panic. It's early in the season, a lot to learn, a lot to build on as well. And we mentioned, I mean, they're it, they're filling in a lot of minutes too. These guys, you know, even if you know they, they've they've played basketball, they've been in the moment. But there's a difference when you step up onto this floor, especially in this environment for your first game with everything that they're trying to to replace and, and try to to grow from. So nothing to panic about if you're Bath as LCC is not able to get that shot off before the third co quarter comes to a close. But right now it is all LCC. They're on top, 48-19 at the end of three. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Tonight's three-point sponsor is 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lanes. Proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Elida Fieldhouse in the 35th annual Elida Tip-Off Classic. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. This is just the opening night. Have a big game following that will also be here on WOSN, Elida and Shawnee. The winner of this game will face the winner of that one tomorrow night. And just It's always a great way to kick off the start of boys high school basketball in the area. It's a tradition. The gym is packed. Everybody's excited. It'll be a long time before we see crowds like this in any <laughs> other gym, and to get it on opening weekend is awesome. Yeah, it's just great. I mean, for the, the fans that come out, you know, and it's since COVID, Nate, it's been so hard to get a full crowd, you know, especially in, unless it's tournament time. And already we've got a nice full crowd there, a good look at play there by Kane Sullivan. But uh, just a, a big crowd watching these kids play. And it's interesting. I was watching Cincinnati News this week, Nate, and they mentioned trying to get a tip-off early in the season like Northwest Ohio does. And I thought, that's the tip-off classic they're talking about. <laughs> so all around the state, they know that this is a really uh, an incredible event that's been happening for so long. Yeah, well, it's one of those things, just basketball in general in this area, I think it's one of those things that we all, even those of us who are entrenched in this and spend a lot of time around you know, the high school sports scene, we take it for granted what we have here compared to the rest of the state. When the rest, Absolutely. when you start talking to people from around the state, they're like, "Wait, that's all in that area?" <laughs> it, they, it's hard to believe, you know. And you look at it again, even with, with football, with the state finals going yeah. on and the representation down there for this area. I mean, it's tremendous and happy to have high school basketball back underway this season. As Drew Pester is going to try to go to the lane and fights through the contact off the glass. Drew Pester going to go to the line for the end one. And does a nice job up on top on the top of the kid, getting the steal, then using his left hand, taking it to the hole, getting himself to the free throw line. Another guy coming off the bench for the T-Birds that's giving a good contribution for them. So Pester at the free throw line. Shot is up off the side of the rim. Going to be rebound by Markley. He pushes it up ahead to Foster. Jackson going to spin, tries to get that one off, and he's going to be fouled. He'll go to the line. We'll see if they get Pester or Quatman for that one. Yeah, Foster, I talked a little bit about him earlier. I like his athletic ability. I like uh, some of the parts of his game that, you know, he's pretty smooth. I, li I like how he uh, spin move there and just has all parts of his game working for him right now. And if you're if you're Jackson Foster, you know, you walk away from tonight and I think you feel pretty good about what you've done and knowing you can continue to get better as the season goes on. You know, and, and if you're Bath too, you know, we talked about, you know, trying to figure some things out. No reason to panic. I mean, you know, it's a long season, right? I mean, there's a lot that is going to happen and change and you're going to get better. But if you're Bath and you're trying to figure out, okay, we got to find somebody that this offense can run through. Yep. Coming out of tonight, Jackson Foster looks like he might be that player. Yeah, I think there's two guys, Jackson Foster being one of them, Logan Markley being the other one that has really shown a lot of positivity for the Wildcats. And, you know, Nate, there's just another guy coming off the bench for LCC contributing. That's Jake Neiman there coming off the bench and drilling the triple. But, you know, Bath, there's a lot to build on, and they're going to discover a lot of things as the season goes on. There's another 20th century lanes three-point try by LCC. That one goes down. And actually, I think our rosters might be off. I'm going to try to find the handwritten one. I actually think that that is actually Camillo Buste, okay. the exchange student for LCC coming off the bench. I think he switched jersey numbers on us. <laughs> As another 20th century three-point, uh, 20th century lanes three-point shot goes down, this time for Bath. Well, you know, else, or Bath's battled back here. I mean, it, it felt like early on there was that 48-18 to 18 lead. Now Bath kind of 
hanging in here in the fourth quarter, not giving up. LCC obviously has some new faces in and some guys coming off the bench here, but Bath's not giving up. They're battling, they're fighting, they're clawing, they're making shots, and that's what you like to see in a team that's uh, early on in the season. Qualman trying to fight through traffic, got that shot off, got redirected, but almost able to get his own rebound that time, but lost it out of bounds and back to the Wildcats. Yeah, and Coach Lozier tonight's played his played eight on his bench tonight, and did a nice job of mixing things up, bringing different guys into this game. And, you know, we talked about this this game and this just situation, Nate. You know, even at, at Elida, as they play here on a normal basis, you don't see these kind of crowds. I mean, the whole community of Lima is here to see it. And it's really cool to see all four schools come in and watch each other. I love this, that Elida fans and Shawnee fans come early to watch the bath an LCC game, and you'll see the LCC and Bath fans stay late to watch the Elida Shawnee game. Well, it, everybody that's involved in putting this together, all four schools, you know, uh, the athletic director here, Dave Evans, everybody who runs this, they do a great job of making this feel special, right? There, there's a special program that goes out for the tip-off classic. One of the greatest renditions of um, the national anthem that I've yeah. ever heard kicked us off here tonight by one of the students. Uh, you had a great um, halftime show. All four cheerleading squads get together and perform. And it's just one of those things that makes this a, such a standout thing to kick off the season. Well, in and, and, and these schools, there's rivalry. I mean, that, that's just natural. And, and they'll play each other during the regular season, which is, is really neat, too, that they'll, they'll match up twice during the year. But I always feel like this one is meant to be like, hey, it, I wouldn't say it's a friendly rivalry, but it's a it's an opportunity for everybody to come together and just kick the season off. And and I think what happens too is that you have fans from Shawnee watch people from LCC and say, oh, I, I like the way that kid plays. I'm going to follow him. Or you have a you know people from Bath watching the Elida game and you say, oh, I, I like that coach. Or I like that player. And it just creates that community that we have from Lima that will you know, kick into gear for the entire season. So everybody supports each other, even though there is a, a pretty a thick rivalry there. So Bath gets the ball out of bounds as Matthew Quatman had his hands on that last possession. Couldn't quite track it down before going into the stands. So 4.38 left to go in this one. LCC on top, 53-26. The Wildcats. Excuse me, the Wildcats looking to get something going on offense here. Fighting down low, that shot hangs on the rim, no good. Rebound in the putback, that one goes. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Have a whistle on the other end, as this one will go against Bath. Yeah, and one thing that we have noticed about this, uh, this new free throw rule or I guess change or regulation, however you want to say it is, we really haven't seen a lot of uh, bonus free throws tonight. I mean, we've seen free throws on the foul um, and guys going to the free throw line, but that's it's been interesting, and especially in a situation like this with a big lead. Uh, I, you know, there might be times where you're, you're in, the, in the bonus by this point, but we haven't seen that already, and both teams not even close to reaching that here in the fourth quarter. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. And to that point, you know, before the end of the first quarter, LCC was already at five-team fouls. Yeah. Bath was shooting. The old way, we probably would have been in at least uh, the one-and-one one bonus right. before the end of the halftime. And that might have changed some things, though, if you're Bath, because right, that was a 14-9 game going into that second quarter. Maybe you pick up some more fouls, which they did. You slow things down. You yep. get extra possessions. You know, it, it, can, it changes the way people play, but that didn't happen at reset, and LCC kind of exploded there in that second quarter. Yeah, I like how you said that, Nate, and, and you're exactly right. I think if you're Bath, one of the things you wanted to do was slow things down, and one thing – way you can do that is the foul guys and at least send them to the free throw line and make them make free throws but instead you weren't in that situation and so what happened LCC used their smothering defense to create transition points we'd like to take a second to thank tonight's presenting sponsor State Bank contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs visit yourstatebank.com member FDIC equal housing lender we see Zach Wells step to the Metzger Financial Services, or excuse me, the Web Insurance Agency free throw line. Wasn't able to connect on his first, has a second shot coming. Leaves that one short. It's gonna be last touch by LCC as Malachi Talbert wasn't able to gather that one in, so the Wildcats will be able to keep possession. Wells guarded by Quatman, looks for the inbounds. 
Trying to find somewhere to go with the basketball underneath his own basket. He's going to have to send it really long for Jackson. Foster is able to gather that one in. Lost his dribble, but gathered it back in, but it's taken away by LCC. Quatman comes up with it. 3.28 left to go here in the quarter. Quatman moves it around the perimeter. Ended up in the hands of Aaron Hutchins, Jr., a very familiar name in the world of LCC and in high school basketball across the state as he comes onto the floor. Not used to seeing Aaron, uh, name Aaron Hutchins coming off the bench for LCC, but he's getting some time here on the floor, young man. Glad to have him back, part of this area as well, him and his father. Yeah, his father was incredible. If you're our age, Nate, and you're from Lima area at all, you knew the name Aaron Hutchins and Anthony Hutchins as well. Just a really fun time in the 90s where they were uh, leading the T-Birds to state. And, uh, and I just remember those Coach Segerson coach teams. They are just such a fun time uh, uh, in the 90s for LCC. A lot of contact right there as Matthew Quatman ended up on the floor after that scramble. See Crawford trying to get through there. He's going to get whistled for the foul. And this one will be on the side as Quatman's going to come over to take the inbounds. And that's the cool thing about this tip-off. I mean, I, I think I, if I remember right, it began in the 80s, and it kind of was an idea by Coach Chris Adams and uh, back in the day about what to do and how to start this thing off and invite these four teams. And, you know, over the years they've been able to maintain this tip-off. And like I said earlier, you just remember names, you remember faces, and, and they become kind of like legendary as time goes on. Nice job by Sullivan on that takeaway, able to get two more up for the Wildcats. 2.20 left to go. I like what Sullivan's done. He's come in tonight off the bench, and he's given them a little bit of a spark here. He's given an effort. I like his enthusiasm. I like his effort on the defensive end as well. Pastor tried to hustle as he lost that basketball going in. Thought maybe he could save it, but he steps out of bounds. Some more substitutions coming into the game for Bath. Number 22, Jaden Ryan checking in. And number 11, Everett Benzman is coming in for the Wildcats. Number zero, Dagan Hawkins also in for Bath. This is a great time to kind of, I, I don't want to say empty the bench, but, you know, one of the fears that you have, even though you're down, you don't want to start subbing guys is because, number one, guys got to get in game shape. And, and, you know, if you're LCC even, if you're Coach Powell, you, you, you run that risk of, you know, you got a, a game tomorrow night, so you don't want to play guys uh, too much, but you don't want to underplay them as well because they need to start getting in game shape, playing four quarters. There are going to come opportunities here, especially in the next several weeks as you're you know, looking at some of these schedules. I know they have uh, LCC has Allen East and Salina coming up here, and I know that uh, the Bath will be playing Ottaville and Shawnee here in the next few weeks. So you want to make sure that you get in game shape. The only way you can do that is to leave guys out on the floor. Great hustle by Quadman to get to that one. Able to get his hands on that, knocks it out. So Welsh will take it out of bounds for Bath. Another long backcourt pass for the Wildcats. See Hawkins coming up, guarding by Hutchins, has to get rid of it. Parker gets his hand in there to knock that one away. No, excuse me, Quadman got his hand in there to knock that one away, and we're going to have a, another foul. Matthew Quatman, he's just been active. I mean, he's come off the bench and really given – excuse me, he was a starter tonight, but he's just – I've been out on the floor and he's been active every every place he's been. Hasn't done a ton offensively tonight. Really hasn't even – he hasn't even been on the scoreboard. But defensively and just giving that leadership, I like his attitude. I like what he brings to the Thunderbird team. Well, and I think that that's going to be the key to this LCC team. You see that one rim out. Quatman goes up for the rebound. Everybody, when you have a team, especially teams that you have high expectations for and you want to have your long success, right? Everybody's got to have their role. You're going to have your scores. You're going to have your energy guys. You're going to have the, those guys who can go in and show that toughness and get you the extra rebounds and, and don't mind having to, to, you know, you know, get dirty for the lack of a better term. They yeah. get those after those 50-50 balls. And at least for tonight, LCC has looked like they have had all those different phases. Yep. You know, we have seen the, the energy coming from Angelo Collins. We've seen the scoring come from the bench. We've seen the starters play uh, great when they've been out there. Even when foul trouble comes in, the bench guys came in and they were able to keep things going on the right track for him as well. And you're talking about Matthew Quatman now and his toughness and the tenacity and able to – he does the little things – and when teams have all of those phases covered, they're dangerous. Man, Nate, I, I love how you said that. There's only one basketball on the court, and so that ball is only going through one hoop. 
they need lots of guys to do lots of different things. And you said it very, uh, you said it perfectly tonight. Just there's so many different guys that are going to accept those roles. And and really, that's what a team is: is when guys are unselfish enough to to do things that no one else wants to do, even if it's not the guy that gets his name in the newspaper or gets his name on, you know, I, I guess now the social media websites. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not the they don't get the the highest retweets or things like that because of of what they score, but being able and willing to do the things that, that it's necessary for a team to have a successful run. Matthew Quatman looking to dribble this one out for LCC, guarded by Daniel Cole, who checked in for Bath. Also, Josiah Clark in for the Wildcats as well as the last few seconds are going to tick off of this one. LCC is going to come away with the victory here in the opening night of the tip-off classic here at the Fieldhouse as they win 53-31. It was a great game, a lot of ups and downs, but we want to take a look at tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out our highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And we were able to have some conversations here. We talked about a lot of guys on LCC, even right there at the end, and everybody did a little bit of everything. But I'll tell you what, one guy stood out in particular, especially with what he did coming off the bench. Yeah, Parker Judy comes off the bench, and Nada was an immediate impact. He quickly come in the game and hit two triples from both corners, but it was really the spark because LCC, even though they were playing smothering defense, they were struggling to score early on. I like what he did. He came off the bench. He had a great attitude. He hit a couple big shots, got them going, ended up being the leading scorer tonight. Parker Judy, your Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. So it's only one game and it's opening night, but LCC did a great job. They come away with the victory. They will play in tomorrow night's championship against the winner of Shawnee and Elida. That is going to wrap it up for us here at the Fieldhouse. LCC comes away with the victory, 53-31. For John Zerbe, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.